All right, thanks for watching. And in French, we have this beautiful saying, pourquoi faire simple si on peut faire compliqué? Why make it easy if you could make it hard? And in fact, let's try to solve tangent of x equals 2 using complex numbers. And just a little bit of background story. I was talking with Black Pen, Red Pen, and he was telling me, sure, I am. Solve tangent of x equals 2. And I tried to do it the complex way, and I realized at the end he was joking. And you'll see why. All right, so let's try to solve that. So sine of x over cosine of x equals 2. But what is sine in terms of complex exponentials? It's e to the ix minus e to the minus ix over 2i and over e to the ix plus e to the minus ix over 2. And you set this equal to 2. And already, first simplification, the 2's cancel out. It's already very good. And then what you get is e to the ix minus e to the minus ix over e to the ix plus e to the minus ix over i equals 2. But just putting the i on the right side, we get 2i. All right. This is already very good, but we can simplify this further because this is 1 over that. So e to the minus ix is 1 over e to the ix. So if you let y to be e to the ix, then what we get is y minus 1 over y over y plus 1 over y equals 2i. And in order to get rid of the y on the denominator, just multiply both sides. By, I mean, multiply top and bottom by y. And then what you get is the following equation. So y squared minus 1 over y squared plus 1 equals 2i. And now cross multiply. So y squared minus 1 equals 2i y squared plus 1. So y squared minus 1 equals 2i y squared plus 2i. And then let's put you know, the square terms on the left-hand side. So what we get is, I think, y squared minus 2i y squared equals 1 plus 2i. So 1 minus 2i y squared equals 1 plus 2i. And then you can put, and you can solve for y squared. So y squared equals 1 plus 2i over 1 minus 2i. And as usual, i don't like to be on the bottom. So let's try to simplify this. So 1 plus 2i over 1 minus 2i. Let's try to multiply this by 1 plus 2i on both sides. And well, this becomes a square. So this is 1 plus 2i squared. And the bottom is a squared minus b squared. So I think 1 plus 4, because again, i squared is minus 1, times minus 1 becomes plus. And then this becomes 1 plus 4i minus 4 over 5. And so I think minus 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i. OK, and the idea is for complex numbers, it's nice to write this in terms of complex exponentials. So in other words, let's try to write this, perhaps, in the form cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So let's try to write minus 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i somehow equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And right on. All right, and unfortunately, we don't have a completely explicit expression for this, but still quite a satisfying one. Because if this were a plus, it should remind you of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 
kind of like that. So this is 3, or maybe this is 3, this is 4, and this is 5. So in fact, again, if we had a plus, we could just let theta to be arctangent okay, of 4 thirds because then tangent would be 4 thirds. But again, this is not quite true because we do want the cosine to be negative. So kind of in terms of our unit circle, if let's say this is our arctangent of 4 thirds, really what we want is this angle here, like this one here. Because again, same value of sine, but negative value of cosine. And the question is, what is this angle? Well, it's just pi minus that angle. So really, theta is pi minus arctangent of 4 thirds. And again, it's a bit complicated, because for arctangent, the output is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it's not just arctangent of minus 4 thirds. That wouldn't work. All right, and so we do have this expression. And what's nice about this is then we get that y squared, or yeah, y squared, then does become cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, which then becomes y squared equals e to the i theta, for again, this specific value of theta. All right, but remember what was y. y was e to the ix. So e to the ix squared equals e to the i theta. And then e to the 2xi equals e to the i theta. And now the nice thing is we can equate the exponents, provided that, remember, we can always add a multiple of myself plus 2 pi m i. And so what we get in the end, we just get 2 x i equals i theta plus 2 pi m i. And then the theta cancels, I mean the i's cancel out. And we get 2 x equals theta plus 2 pi m. And then x becomes, again, theta over 2 plus multiples of me, plus pi m. Okay. So explicitly, what is this saying? Well, the solutions of tangent of x equals 2 are precisely given by x equals, so theta over 2, which remember was pi minus arctangent of 4 thirds over 2 plus pi m. So x is just pi over 2 minus 1 half arctangent of 4 thirds plus pi m. And that's when I realized that black pen, red pen was just messing with me. Because it turns out we started with this real equation and we got a real solution. So it turns out we didn't need uh, complex numbers after all because you could have just said for instance that if a tangent of x equals 2 then x is arctangent of 2 plus multiples of pi m. This is not more meaningful than the other expression. I know. However, I mean, maybe now we found some identity relating arctangent of 2 and pi, min pi over 2 minus 1 half arctangent of 4 thirds. Again, maybe I discovered a new trig identity, but probably not. Still, kind of fun to see that sometimes you can go to the complex world and then go back to the real world. So I think not, not everything is lost. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.